Hey guys, this is Desiree, and welcome to Unbound Book Reviews, and today I'm going to be reviewing Wicked Heart by Lisa Raven. This book has been on my Kindle for quite some time. It was just released, I believe, on May 17th, but I was lucky enough to have received an art copy for it, and that was a few months ago, and I let time get away from me. May 17th all of a sudden came and started chomp, chomp, chomping away at my ass and here it is and I'm late. I am ashamed of myself. I am really sorry. <laughs> For those of you who are not familiar with Lisa Raven, she does have two other books out right now. Well, two others in this particular series. This is the Star-Crossed Lover series. The first two are Bad Romeo and Broken Juliet and those revolve around the same couple. So this one revolves around Alyssa Holt and Liam Quinn. Now having said that, I have read Bad Romeo as well as Broken Juliet and I really love them both. I read them well before I started up this channel um, otherwise I would have done a review for them this one totally took my breath away holy shit top read 2016 possibly ever so this review is going to be not necessarily a non-spoiler review but not a spoiler review technically I'm gonna stay away from all of the heavy spoilers I try to keep it as spoiler free as I possibly can I cannot promise that one won't slip out of my fat mouth eventually but We'll see what happens. So Elissa Holt is a stage manager and she's working on a production of Taming of the Shrew by Shakespeare on Broadway. Her long lost love, Liam Quinn, now giant mega movie star, will be playing the lead. And as if that isn't bad enough, cause it always gets worse, we know this, his beautiful American sweetheart girlfriend and the counterpart to his hit movie lead, so they were a hit movie couple and now they're going to be a couple in this Broadway play. She's coming along too and Elissa manages to keep things very professional even though this is the long lost love of her life who just up and left to pursue an acting career in LA the night after they met and really felt their connection. So what helps Alyssa is keeping her mindset that she's always sort of had in no dating actors. Actors are hands off. And the reason why she has this uh, mentality is when she was younger and she dated actors, they kept leaving her for their leading ladies. And she's just so sick of it. She doesn't want anything to do with it. And at the time when she and Liam had met years and years ago, six years prior to be exact, he was a construction worker, but what he didn't tell her until he showed up to the audition was that he was an aspiring actor. If he said, I'm going to be an actor, she wouldn't have gone for it. End of. So him being a little crafty fellow, just completely negated to tell her that until he showed up for her audition. And then shortly after that, he got a call from LA to star in this new movie. I think it's called Renegade Angels or something like that. It's an angels and demons movie. And this is the movie off which he made his success and met his fiance. Yeah, I said it, fiance. So when she finally does meet Liam again, as polite and as professional as she aspires to be, it's almost as though no time has passed. And she has to really fight to keep herself together and to acknowledge that this guy is sort of out of her league now. He is this hit movie star, he has the beautiful, perfect girlfriend, and she has to just stand by as though their history never existed and manage to not feel anything for him and to go on with the production without anything getting in the way. But, and I believe this is in the summary, love doesn't have a script. So, in other words, shit happens. First and foremost, I know this was on the top of my uh-oh list in my head, is this a love triangle or a cheating novel? No, it isn't. I'm not going to expound upon that statement because that would contain spoilers and I'm trying to be good here. Next thing, this had some of my favorite characters in any book ever. I loved all of the characters and I mean I loved every last one of them. Well, except for one, but he's a minor character and there's a reason why I don't like him. All of the central characters in the book, I absolutely loved. And they all had the most unique and amazing personalities. They were just so well-rounded and you wanted to really be best friends with everybody. I found myself wanting the whole story to just 
come to reality because I wanted to know these people. I wanted to be friends with these people. None of these characters were flat. It, you would figure Alyssa would just kind of be melancholy and sort of despondent seeing the love of her life that managed to get away every single day and with another woman and engaged to another woman completely untouchable there will never be another one like him and not being able to do anything about it but she wasn't she just had so much to her this book had the greatest best friend secondary character of any book i've ever read period lissa's best friend and roommate josh is just incredible <laughs> I was laughing out loud through so many things that he'd said. He just, I loved him. I, I wished that I would have been clever enough to come up with a character like that. And as much as I think I could try, I don't think I could ever get it to the perfection that is Josh. He's just the perfect wingman. With every other best friend in novels, I always find a reason to dislike them. Like, somehow they manage to come across as asshole-ish or you know, too preppy or, you know, usually it's like an opposites thing where the roommate and the, where the best friends just don't have anything in common and you wonder, how the hell are these two people best friends? I don't really think this happens in real life. But Josh and Alyssa, their connection as two best friends without it coming across as a romantic interest was perfect. I want Josh in my life. He's who I want standing next to me, making all the decisions in my life and just taking all of that weight off my shoulders and I would trust every single word he said because I know that he would give it to me straight whether I liked it or not. Like I said, amazing characters, out of this world characters and because these characters were so well written and so multifaceted and well rounded, the connection between Liam and Alyssa just jumps off of the pages. It's so tangible. Their relationship, Alyssa and Liam's, is a relationship that we all dream about when we're little girls and we're dreaming about love and all that. We're dreaming about Liam. That's who we're dreaming about. That's who I was dreaming about at the very least. Although my Liam back in the day was Leonardo DiCaprio and Titanic. I mean, come on. As soon as Alyssa and Liam meet, at their meet cute, it's just instant. You know instantly these characters belong together. Fictional or not, these characters, these people, were perfect for one another. And you just, you root for them throughout their entire journey through this book. And there is so much angst in this book. So much angst. Oh, But at the same time, it was equally heartwarming and it was equally funny. This book was friggin' hilarious. Best dialogue I've read in a long time. And again, dialogue. I'm kind of crazy with dialogue. It's so hard to impress me with dialogue because I need it to be genuine. I need to feel like these people are real. This was flawless. It was perfect. I reiterate, I want all of these people in my life. I actually use one of the lines in this book. It's nothing, it's like a really minor line, but I fell in love with it. I used it yesterday um, with my husband. So Elissa hates to exercise, and she's really, really funny in how she describes her hatred towards exercise. I was really tired last night, and I was coming up the stairs, and I just flopped on the couch. And my husband looks at me and goes, are you okay? And I just said, yep, just trying to disguise my extreme fitness so I don't intimidate you. <laughs> and I had to use it. I love it when I can steal lines from characters and books and just use them in my real life. And this book was chock full of them. So many great quips, so much fun banter, so sweet, and again, so heartwarming. And Josh, oh man, I laughed so many times with him. Also one of those books where I didn't hate the other woman, aka Angel. I commiserated with her. I really enjoyed her character. No spoilers, so I'm just gonna zip it and go from there. That's all I'm gonna say. As much as I loved Bad Romeo and Broken Juliet, I absolutely loved Ethan's and Cassie, Cassie, Cassie's story. But Lisa, honey, you have outdone yourself with these two. I don't know if you can top this. If you can top this, you are a writing goddess. This book just, it, you get sucked into it immediately. It's impossible not to get sucked into this book. And it's impossible not to want every last one of these characters in your life 
as your best friend forever. Only great writers can make characters this amazing and this lovable and this believable and realistic. It was perfection. All right, guys, so that is it for me today. I will have the buy links for Wicked Heart down below. It is now available, I believe, on all platforms, but I will most definitely have the Amazon link listed in the description bar. And please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you are not already to see some more videos from me, and I will see you guys later. Bye! Thank you.